Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. Today we'll be talking about the basics of Kiwi layouts. Before we jump into the Kiwi layout basics, let's recap on what we know. You can also read the written version of this video on my Python programming blog at prospercoder.com. In the previous part, we left off with a custom widget consisting of a text input and two buttons. Here's the code again. First, the Python file, so the imports, my custom button class, my custom widget class, and here's our app, Hello World app, which is run over here. And now the Kiwi file. Here we have a rule for my custom button. And here we have the three widgets, text input, my custom button, and my custom button. If you run this code, you will see the following. Here's the text input and the two buttons. As I mentioned before, this is just still one widget. But you're not limited to just one widget. If you need more, you can put them in a special container called Layout. A Kiwi layout inherits from the widget class and takes care of organizing the widgets embedded in it. There are a couple of different layouts available and they all organize the widgets in different ways. We're going to discuss all the particular layouts in the following parts. For now, let's just list them all and characterize them briefly so that you know what there is at your disposal. I'm also going to talk about the basics of positioning and scaling widgets inside layouts in this part. Actually, let's start with the latter. So here's a short introduction to positioning and scaling widgets in layouts. Up to now, we've been using the pass and size properties to position and scale widgets respectively. You can also use them in layouts but there are more options available. Usually, instead of the two aforementioned properties, we use two other properties, pass hand and size hand. These are proportional coordinates, so they are expressed as percentages of the total size of the window. It's going to become clearer when we see some examples in the following parts. Actually, there are even more options than just pass, size, pass hand and size hand. The one thing to remember here is that properties like pass, size, width, or height are used with fixed numbers of pixels, whereas properties like pass hint and size hint, as well as some others, are used with proportional coordinates. And now let's talk about the basic Kiwi layout types. So what layouts do we have? Quite a few. The first one is float layout. This layout works pretty much the same as we saw when we were creating custom widgets. It organizes the widgets inside the app window using the proportional coordinates, pass hint and size hint, so the values are percentages of the window's dimensions. Then we have relative layout. This layout differs from the previous one in that positions are relative to the layout and not the window. Then we have box layout. This is a layout we're going to use a lot throughout the whole project. It organizes the widgets in a single row or column. Then we have stack layout. This layout is similar to box layout in that it also organizes the widgets in a row or column. The difference is that if it runs out of space, the next widgets are placed in the next row or column depending on its orientation. Then we have grid layout. This layout organizes the widgets in a grid with a given number of rows and columns. Anchor layout. If you want your widgets to stick to the top, bottom, or one of the sides, this is the best layout to choose. It just anchors the widgets at specific positions. Then we have scatter layout. This layout is the way to go if your application uses multi-touch gestures for translating, scaling, and rotating. Apart from that, it's very much like relative layout. 
Finally, we have page layout. This layout is slightly different. You can use it to create a multi-page effect where the particular pages may be flipped. You will usually put another layout in each page and put the widgets only inside of it. If you heard the last sentence about page layout carefully, you notice that you can nest layouts, so put one layout inside of another. It's a very flexible feature, which we'll be using a lot. These are the Kiwi layout basics, more or less. So let's head to the first layout, float layout, which we will be using in the next part. In the next part, we'll be also talking about scaling and positioning widgets in layouts. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.